let's talk about CDN guys so content delivery networks this is also in our evolving technology course uh, this topic will be asked in the CCD practical exam I am ex expecting that content delivery networks what we will talk uh, why we are having CDN why what are the advantages of CDN um, which companies are doing CDN we need to understand a little bit about this business we need to understand what is content provider what is over the top provider some terminology which we are using in CDN and then we will talk how CDN works of course uh, we will talk about different server selection criteria and server redirection criteria and we will talk about request routing request routing uh, sometimes you might hear that one is proximity based routing uh, you will see what I'm talking about there will be some topologies as well and so let's start first we need to understand the business as I said basically content delivery networks or content distribution networks companies they replicate their content closer to the users large user population they bring their cache engine servers and we will call them edge servers uh, but of course in different businesses like service providers you might hear mostly as cache and uh, edge server cache these are all same term basically bringing their servers to the uh, user closer to the user how much closer that's a very big discussion anyway for that one we need to understand another topics like uh, internet exchange point uh, access provider transit provider etc i can refer you to the search provider network design and architecture book for that or you can get entire course service provider course on the monarchy.net but uh, hopefully you have an idea on what is transit service provider access service provider uh, ixp's internet exchange points so on and so forth so i will not mention about those things but uh, for your complete understanding probably it would be better uh, if you would know so let's have a look at what is content provider some new terminologies also you will hear there content providers are defined as companies that provide actual content to consumers youtube netflix facebook these guys are content providers mostly we will hear uh, as OTTs as well over the top uh, companies over the top providers and in, from the internet resource point of view we have two different internet resources so consumers and content providers you can think like myself I can be both content providers as well as uh, uh, consumers but mainly I am consuming the content provider service let's say if I watch Netflix I am the consumer and that consumer is called eyeball in technical term eyeball uh, those who maybe deployed or who studied IPv6 dual stack networks probably heard about this eyeball concept which is prioritizing IPv6 over IPv4 request you have different version uh, API eyeball version 1 version 2 in IPv6 0 here of course I'm talking those even different version comparing different versions etc but anyway eyeball is actual users and content data which uh, users are consuming okay what does content provider do search engines tv stations video providers like youtube netflix etc as i said these are content providers and commonly also referred as over the top providers they have direct relationship with billions of customers Customers pay for the ISPs and content provider services. Think about yourself. So you are paying for your access service provider to get uh, XDSL, FTTX, uh, cable, uh, and you want to reach out to internet. But you are also paying for the Netflix, right? So now, uh, from the customer point of view, you are paying two sides and this generally uh, creates in some countries in the world network net neutrality problems like uh, in netherlands in the united states so on and so forth so prioritizing some uh, content over the other content so on and so forth we will not also talk about that 
but uh, customers pay for the ISPs and the content provider service. Content providers are not affected by the regulations. Regulations are generally comes for the service provider, not for the content provider. This make this content provider are the richest companies in the world. And in fact, out of 10 richest company uh, as of two, uh, 2018, six of them was those content or OTT providers, okay? This is important, in my opinion, and big debate between the ISPs and the content providers are happening, and from the internet survivability point of view, so internet sustainability point of view, it's important, I think, uh, this net neutrality concept as well, probably I should put that concept, uh, and we need to maybe debate in our evolving technology course as well. So, let's continue. What does content provider do? Uh, they have their, some of them, their uh, global networks. They have their own CDN. So what we are seeing now, they are not totally different entities. Content provider CDNs, you might think they are totally separate, but no. Especially large content providers, they have their own CDN service, Google. It's very famous in any service provider guys they will tell you what is the Google's cache engine names. They call it GGCs, Google Global Cache. And you might see Google Global Cache because Google have uh, open peering policy. So they might, they want to peer with everyone. There are some, of course, peering requirements such as 24 by seven no network operation center requirements and so on and so forth. But they want to peer with everyone. They are content provider as long as you can provide some capacity to them, they will come and bring their server, at Google Global Cache, to you. Of course, there are always politics, there are always some governmental uh, issues, such as we have in Turkey. Uh, government want to, Turkish government wanted to censor all the uh, traffic, uh, Google traffic as well, and they refused that, they removed all their servers, from every IXP as well as ISP in Turkey. And now all the Turkish people, they are reaching out to YouTube content from Europe. Mm, that's the, what's happening for the uh, Google content. Anyway, Netflix, they have their CDN service as well. And large content providers, they have their own CDN service. Anyway, let's move on. A little bit after business, we will start technical topics. But uh, first, who is doing this, where they are doing this, and some terminologies also you should know, in my opinion. So when we talk about the technical stuff, hopefully it will be easier to understand. Over the top, this is basically we are referring content providers. Uh, OTT, you can see this term a lot. It's not different than saying content providers, okay? Over the top provider. What is you, you, we always talk about overlay underlay you can think about it as overlay who is underlay isps okay so that's why there is a debate ah isps are just dump pipe uh, we are not selling service etc no they are selling service uh, it, if it's access providers they are selling the service to the residentials or their uh, business customer providing access service if it's transit companies they are providing actually the service to not only uh, the other isps but content provider CDNs, etc. Of course, the CDN concept overall is reducing the transit service provider business. Think about it. Maybe you cannot think about it now. So let's move on a little bit more. Uh, what are the benefits of it? And uh, for the user, for the access provider, for the content provider, for the CDN, and maybe in this game, uh, transit providers are losing the money losing the um, their revenues but uh, someone of course will lose someone will make money okay advantages of CDN I think very obvious reducing the latency for the users so increasing the throughput right content distribution network reduce latency and increase service resilience because content is replicated to many nodes you might be in, let's say, I'm in Turkey now, and content probably is distributed 
if it's not in Turkey, in many countries, even maybe many cities in Europe. And closest location we can get, uh, let's say from Amsterdam Internet Exchange, if it's not available, somehow the connection to there, or maybe the entire IXP went down, we can get the content from Dikix Frankfurt. So there are many IXPs we can get it. So content is replicated, especially the popular content is replicated to many places, right? CDN works in this way. So reduced latency. Why? We will see with the topology. Because we are not getting the content from the origin location, but from the closest, closest, that closeness based on what we will talk about, closest location we will get the content, not from the origin. Okay. Before CDN, contents were served from the source location, which increased latency, that's why I reduced the throughput. Now, content were delivered from, uh, in this case, content were delivered from the central side, now distributed fashion, centralized distribution. This is also, in, you can apply whatever you know from the general network design about the central versus distributed architecture. Everything applies here. Less number of devices to deal with from the content provider point of view, CDM provider point of view, right? If it's centralized approach, distributed, thousands of servers to deal with. All the advantages and disadvantages of centralized versus distributed architecture applies here as well. And um, let's move on. This topology, I think, explains many things. Before CDN, after CDN. So users are accessing the content from the central location now the central location still stay there origin of the content is still there but now it's replicated to many edges so if these users are asking they are receiving from the edge of the network so the closest point from their point of view they can get the content that's the idea i think in the exam they are in the CCD exam i'm talking about they are coupling this with another architecture like PGP configuration, etc. So uh, I cannot go far and talk about more on that because any issue. But uh, of course, in CCD practical, uh, we are talking PGP configurations in detail as well, of course. And uh, so after you understand CDN and configuration, hopefully you can merge these two knowledge and then answer uh, the question correctly. Who is doing this CDM business? Almost everyone. There are companies who is doing actual business as CDN, no content <laughs> providers. There are content providers, especially large ones, have their own CDN network. Uh, there are large tier one ISPs, level three was one of them now, Centrelink acquired level three. Uh, there are tier one ISPs, as I said, even tier two ISPs. Uh, they are providing CDN services, so it's a if it's if they see this one is beneficial if they have customer base and their server cost etc. is uh, definitely uh, they can generate revenue. They they are doing this business. Same thing we are seeing in any service provider business as well. So you might see this company A is doing fixed based business today, but uh, they are starting mobile or vice versa mobile business they are doing maybe and then they start maybe through the acquisition etc they are starting fixed based business as well maybe starting with the FTTX, FTTH, FTTC whatever same thing applies here as I said content providers large one they have their own CDN service CDN companies just their business as CDN we are seeing Akamai probably is the one of the very famous one they have more than 150,000 servers globally. And in fact, we will see most of the CDNs they are using as underlay transport internet. Okay, so replicating content to the edges, they are using internet for that. Later on, we will, when we talk about uh, CDN redirection mechanism, I will explain any case, any case is using underlay BGP, for example, because we are talking about internet. Well, Kamai, they started to build their own private network to replicate the content to the edges. Their private network I'm talking about. Private network versus internet, I think very obvious. Private network, it can be MPLS based, it can be anything based. 
but their control, they control it, not internet, not many other autonomous system numbers which uh, traffic is passing through and then maybe targeted to some uh, security problems or failure will be affecting. So the control on the content is not yours when you use uh, internet as a transport, as you know. Uh, is it reliable compared to 5, 10, 15 years ago? Yes, of course, but reliability is just one parameter. When you have your private network, you can control it. You can say this is the shortest fiber route mile and I should send over this traffic, this content over this way, this content over another path and so on and so forth. Internet, you don't control it. Okay, fine, we know that. Where they deploy? Of course, they want to be closer, as close as possible to the users, right? But this is also economy of scale. And uh, if there is huge customer base, especially in the urban areas, they want to deploy there first. Same thing, not just for CDM business. Think about mobile companies, 4G, 3G, 4G, uh, 5G, even different beast. Uh, those services you may not see in the rural areas because there are not just much, much users. It's not economical to deploy fiber backhaul network. So many things. So that's why we will be seeing not only CDN, those any those bleeding edge technologies, let's say, in the urban areas first. Anyway, so very large user population, especially vertical. Uh, scaling uh, city centers, etc., those places we are talking about. Okay. CDNs, very highly distributed, very highly distributed platforms, anyway. So we are talking thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of servers. Akamai, Line Lake, those guys, uh, Fastly, etc., Cloudflare, they are very large uh, CDN companies. Okay. We are starting slowly how it works. I'm coming there. To improve user experience and lower transmission costs, large companies set up servers with copies of data in strategic geographical locations. User experience. If I am closer to the user, for them to get the content, uh, doesn't matter how many round trip time it needs, will be reduced, right? So because just Propagation delay, speed of light, let's remember it, every 1,000 kilometer, 5 millisecond, every 1,000 mile, 8 millisecond, right? Huh? If the content origin is North America, and if you are bringing bring that content to the Europe, you are reducing 100 millisecond. And you might know how many RTT is required when you have uh, HTTP on top of TCP, on top of SSL, etc. Uh, we are reducing uh, the latency a lot. That's why we are increasing throughput. Now user experience will increase. This is very important for the content providers. Google, maybe you are aware how many submarine cable they, are, they built or they are in the consortium. They got IRU, they, they leased a lot of fibers. Why? Why they are doing this? Exactly. They want to reduce this latency, so user experience will increase. Everybody wants to use more their servers, their services. In fact, even uh, I can see the difference now. My website is much faster compared to before. I changed the hosting providers, now different servers as well. And we put also all my content into the CDN. Yes, Cloudflare. It's working on top of Cloudflare. And it's much faster now. And I am seeing the user ratio, how, how many pages now every user when they come to the website, it's increasing. That's important. Anyway, let's move on. Edge server I was talking about, edge server, cache engines, proxy nodes, they are, we are talking the same thing actually there. Uh, when the user requests the content, First, each server will check if there is content in it. If it's cached, it will, of course, uh, just serve the content to the user. If it's if it's not in the content, if it's not cached, it's called, by the way, cache miss, and it needs to be asked from in a hierarchical way, 
from the upper layer. It can go that upper layer might be origin, might be, maybe. It may not be origin, it might be. So it's a hierarchical. Okay, if it's not very close to you, the closest point to you, maybe in, from the regional cache it will get, or if it's not in the regional cache, it, cache, it will get from the origin node, so on and so forth. So basically, if the content is not in the cache, it will be received from the origin and first time I am talking about, of course. Because when it's cached at the edge server, now second request maybe from totally different user came to the dead edge server and it's cached anymore there now it may not be of course one two three it might be like think about the sports events it might be millions of customers it might be millions of users requesting the same content what we are talking now reducing million times back and forth this uh, network traffic of course okay not, not only latency, but also bandwidth requirement. Bandwidth requirement of who? This access provider, for example. Access provider wants to have the, the content in their network, of course. Okay, but this is a little bit detailed game, to be honest. Uh, it's not normally the topic of here. I want to talk how STM work, uh, how CDM work here. Uh, but normally what happens, uh, let's talk about real case. Netflix, for example, one of those very large OTTs, one of the, uh, very large content providers, and they want to be closer to their customer base, of course, and they try to come and deploy their cache engines in Turkey as well, and uh, all major ISPs, they refused. Actually, they wanted to charge for the Netflix, and they didn't want to pay. They didn't want to pay and except one small service providers and uh, others, all the other companies, they are getting the Netflix content from, again, Europe. But only that company, basically, is providing directly from their network to their customers, Netflix traffic. So uh, that's the idea, guys. Who pays who is a little bit uh, confusing, maybe, because, okay, uh, Netflix didn't pay to the service provider here and closest location to get uh, Netflix content is Europe for the any large ISPs including incumbent ISP incumbent means the ISP who owns also transport networks etc in that country and the locations the central locations etc central ports uh, but Netflix, in fact, in the United States, there is another uh, very large access provider, cable access provider called Comcast. Netflix is paying Comcast and getting partial transit, or we call it paid peering service. This, this is, uh, again, service provider, in the service provider book I am explaining that. Let's continue. I was talking about request routing. So, so far, what we discussed? We just discussed very high level business what is content? What is content provider? What is over the top provider? What, what does CDN mean? Why we are doing CDN? We talked about those. Uh, which companies are doing? Not the name of the company. What type of company wants to do CDN? Okay. Now let's talk about how it works. How users request when it comes. Uh, how we, we just said closest location they deploy the server if I am in Turkey and if they deploy the server in Turkey it's probably better for me to get the content from Turkey not from United States or Australia is very very far from my point of view and just because propagation delay speed of light it could be hundreds of milliseconds I told you just one RTT round trip time so that's why Distance will be important here, but there are other important criteria as well. We will have a look. Okay. So redirecting end user to the optimal edge server based on some attributes, such as network utilization, end user eyeball, end user perceived latency, server load, etc. is critical issue and we call it request routing. Okay. If it's just a uh, distance based, latency based, uh, we call it proximity-based routing. Okay. 
So request routing, redirecting user to the optimal edge server we say. Redirecting user to the optimal edge server based on some criteria. What are, what are those criteria? It can be network utilization, there is no enough capacity towards that location, so many users already sent through that, those nodes, or nodes itself, maybe capacity is fine, but nodes, servers are overloaded, okay, uh, and also distance, the latency can be taken into consideration. And we call this request routing. So request routing deals with two things, server selection and server redirection mechanisms. Let's have a look at them. And I would expect in the CCD exam, by the way, especially server redirection mechanisms. And I will talk about those server redirection mechanisms as well. Server selection mechanisms, this determines the optimal server for the end user. Optimality, ha, when we talk about routing, optimal routing was what? When you hear optimal routing, I even wrote an article for that. We mean shortest IGP cost. Of course, for your network, even in, in the routing point of view, optimal routing may not be based on IGP cost. You might be maybe assigning the cost on the links uh, based on latency or based on and different networks maybe routing point of view ah iot network for example they they use lots of other criteria like uh, etx value reliability right or maybe there are some uh, battery powered nodes and you, you don't want to pass through those nodes and so on and so forth there are many other attributes which we can use in routing but when you say optimal routing in every book, including optimal routing design for us. So we just mean shortest IGP cost. Okay, but in real life, of course, everything is different. You, it doesn't mean for you sh uh, shortest IGP cost when you talk about uh, optimal routing. Here, again, optimal, optimality criteria is not just the user distance to the edge server. It might be edge server load, it might be network bandwidth utilization towards those servers, etc. But because the nearest server, nearest server is commonly considered to best serve to the end users, end user location is typically used, the primary server selection mechanism. End user location will be important. In fact, the most important parameter here. Like in IGP, in uh, general routing, when we talk about shortest IGP cost here in uh, CDM business, end user location is important to select which server this user should be served. Okay. In practice, most CDN servers simply obtain the end user location from the source IP address of the incoming CDN request. We will see DNS, and DNS will be important for, for us here. And some methods of server uh, redirection mechanisms, when we come to server redirection mechanisms, I, I will explain there. Uh, some, some methods will not accurately uh, redirecting the end user to the correct servers, we will see. Some, it will be more accurate. Always design trade-offs. One mechanism will provide flexibility, but uh, less accuracy maybe. Another, more accuracy, but less flexibility less security, more security. So comparison chart again. When we have the alternatives, alternatives, of course, they will have their own advantages and disadvantages. So uh, we will just choose based on which one is best for us. We best what those engineers think, basically. If Because if there will be best, we wouldn't have others. So we know that. Uh, very classical. So that's why we have alternatives. Which one do you think is the best you are using? And when you check very large providers, some of them, these are public uh, presentation you can find. Facebook, uh, Amazon, those guys, when they do Akamai, their, Akamai also they have their uh, public presentation. When they explain how, the, how they are redirecting the end user request to the pop, closest pop locations, blah, 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 closest servers, uh, you will see two approaches in general. And in this document, you will see four, but I will explain those two most common approaches. One of them, uh, 
DNS based redirection, another is incest. So let's just finish this server selection mechanism. We just talk about end user location is important to select the right server. Now we are starting server redirection. Okay, the CDN provider selected the optimal server for the customer based on the, whatever they, they think is the best. So maybe it's not only one attribute, but more than one attribute, like server load is 100% uh, I shouldn't send here. Another place uh, nearby to the user point of view. Okay, server is less utilized, but network may be fully utilized. Another one, so and so forth. Hub, use, let's say server is found, and now end user will be redirected to that server, right? The, the eyeball, the, my, my request, I want to watch Netflix. And how my traffic will be redirect, redirected to the uh, optimal server, server redirection mechanisms. Now, we have four of those methods, as I told you, HTTP-based redirection, URL rewriting, DNS-based approach, and NKS-based approach. In exam, not sure if they are going to that amount of detail, but I would expect to see, uh, this is, I think, one of the most important thing to know in CDN, how we would redirect to the correct server, uh, what are the most common methods should be known in my opinion and in CCD exam if they are asking the um, CDN and I, and I know they are, what else would be important more than this, I'm not sure. So let's talk about DNS based redirection and as I told you any case based redirection and let's uh, finish this topic. So let's continue, let's continue with this. When website visitors so I want to visit some URL. What, what's happening? Basically, my users configure DNS provider, redirects them to the CDN service DNS provider. Once it reaches the CDN, CDN checks user location and they want to redirect user to the closest node. Closest node, but when we use this DNS based redirection, closest node based on what? not the IP address of the clients, but the resolvers. So DNS is, uh, as you might know, recursive lookup we are doing in the DNS architecture. And my IP address is different than, might be different than my uh, DNS resolver IP address. And very nice examples you will see here. It will provide, of course, wrong redirection uh, my DNS resolver might be in Europe, but maybe uh, myself, I am living in Australia. So now CDN will check, okay, DNS resolver contacted with the CDN provider and DNS resolver is in Europe. And maybe I'm using one of those uh, global DNSs, Google uh, DNS, Cloudflare, etc. And now DNS resolver location, uh, because every DNS resolver, they will have their IP address and this IP address will be mapped to the location and that location is showing Europe in the CDN uh, server DNS, so CDN's DNS server. And now Europe, I need to redirect this customer to the European cluster, European servers, but I am in Australia. So this will be a problem with the DNS based approach. So what we are saying here, when a browser makes DNS request for a domain name that's handled by the CDN, the server handling DNS request for the domain domain name looks at the incoming request to determine the best set of servers to handle it. Simplest way, the DNS server does geographic, geographical lookup based on the DNS resolver's IP address and then returns an IP address for an edge server that, that specifically closes to that area. This is important distinction to know. Okay, so DNS resolver's IP address will be contacted with the CDN not my physical IP address. Companies may optimize their CDN in other ways as well. For example, not based on the uh, closest, redirecting to a server that is cheaper to run or that is still sitting idle. So server load point of view, not just closeness distance wise, but most common attribute we said distance. That's why we are talking mostly on the distance part. So still talking about the DNS based redirection and the problem with it, 
just I was explaining to you, and there is solution for that one as well, but that solution people consider it's coming with the privacy problem, that's why uh, when people check, they are seeing this DNS page redirection, okay, maybe flexible, not only distance-wise, but also different criteria. I have comparison chart, I think, here, we'll have a look, but uh, it may not be accurate, but it's providing flexibility, not only based on the distance, but also it's providing server load maybe or other attributes to redirect the clients to the server. Okay, with this approach, CDN, authoritative DNS server, responds to an IP address of the resolver and not the client. For, ex sorry. For example, client based in Australia could be configured to DNS resolver based in Europe. In this case, once the user request has reached the CDN platform, the service will incorrectly assume the originating IP to be in Europe, not in Australia, sending the client to the incorrect node. EDNS is uh, one of the workarounds for this, but EDNS people consider privacy issues. You might have a look at what are the privacy issues later on. And topologically, if you will try to explain this, content provider, I want to reach out to cnn.com, end user here. Here you are seeing the sequence of what exactly happening when you use the DNS space approach and how you get the content if the cnn.com, and by the way, this is a real life example, is hosted on the CDN provider. cnn.com on the Akamai servers. What's happening? End user request goes to the cnn.com. Their DNS server says, go to the DNS route server and ask there. They create here CNAME record, by the way. And with that, when end user receive the response from the DNS root server, it says go to the Akamai Global server. Akamai Global is hierarchy. Akamai Global DNS server here, we are not getting the content yet. There are many round trip time here, talking with the DNS and a lot of round trip time. Yes, DNS based approach, one of the disadvantages will be talking with many DNSs in a hierarchical way. That's why increasing latency. Uh, yes, I will talk about any case approach, which we will not deal a lot of round trip time for DNS uh, resolving. So request an answer. So Akamai DNS server re replies, okay, go to the regional server and regional server says, okay, go to the nearest nearby uh, edge servers. So lots of round trip time here. And again, one of the disadvantages of DNS-based approach, and this is, this is considered the biggest disadvantage today, uh, because many reasons here in Turkey, for example, uh, lots of ISPs based on the government orders, uh, they are censoring, they are or dropping uh, lots of websites and so on and so forth. People are trying to change their DNS to one of those public DNSs, and now your DNS resolver might be in totally different country than you. And just because of that, if the CDN provider, which let's say Netflix is running on Akamai, normally not, uh, you will be redirected to the different place. Even if that content, it would be in Turkey, uh, you would be getting that content from outside of Turkey. Okay, DNS-based approach. Another approach is Anycast. Let's try to first understand, we will compare them, don't worry. In this approach, all the edge nodes, we assign same IP address. Any cast, any cast is not a routing or something, right? Any cast is what? Assigning an IP address in a uh, way, each and every node gets the same IP address. It's just assigning an IP address, one of the ways of assigning an IP address, any cast. In fact, we know Anycast from Multicast as well, not only Anycast DNS, now we are talking Anycast DNS, and Google using this, uh, but we know also Anycast from Multicast, you are CCD student, so just remember that what we were doing, Anycast RP, around this point, so we assign same IP address, and IGP result, which source and which receivers would go to the closest IP, right, from the source registration point of view. Okay. Here, the same thing we are doing for the, all these servers, we are assigning uh, same IP address. When the client sends a request to the IP address, the request will be routed to the nearest server defined by the routing policy. With this approach, content provider may lose some server uh, selection flexibility, right? 
So basically, we will use with this any case based approach only distance based routing policy. Though uh, we have now, you can have a look at there are some uh, writings on that. Uh, load aware any case routing, load aware any case. We might have a look at later on, but uh, mostly we consider this one as just distance based routing policy any case. Same IP address assigned. Now, based on your location, your ASP BGP underlay will decide to reach to the closest IP address location. CDN service providers who configure their platform with any cast set single IP address for all their nodes. When we say any cast, by the way, a little bit detail maybe, but uh, uh, I don't remember the company name, but one of those uh, large content providers. They were doing regional based any cast, regional any cast. So, which means every country in that region they assign same IP address, but in the different region they assigned different IP address. Okay, in the same region, every country same IP address, but different region, different IP address. So, regional based any cast, I heard that one as well. Worldwide any cast, when you say, okay, in every place, same IP address is assigned on the nodes. On that's why we will see some simplification here. Complexity will be reduced, of course. Unlike DNS-based CDN redirection, where every node has a unique IP address and recursive DNS router clients to the closest node, any case uses BGP. And for BGP, we have hundreds of pages of documents. We talk many hours for the BGP, but here with the two sentence, just I am explaining what BGP is doing because this is a uh, this course, this evolving technology course is for everyone. BGP is network level protocol and autonomous systems we have, and basically what we are seeing, we are taking the ASPET into consideration. Less ASPET, shortest ASPET length will be selected as best if you are not doing internal policy with local path and those kind of things, intentionally choosing one path over another path. So shortest ASPET length will be chosen. So distance. Shortest. This is uh, not exactly the same, same thing. Of course, you are the BGP guys, but uh, here, very high level idea. Okay, whichever AS path is shortest, uh, it can be considered distance wise shortest. Uh, you might see in this document, it may not be true, of course. Okay. A CDN configured with any case still using DNS, right? But the primary difference between AnyCast and the DNS-based approach, what, what we have with the on AnyCast only single IP address advertised by the CDN provider, with the DNS-based approach, each node has unique IP address. That's why this CDN routing approach uses the originating client IP address instead of the DNS resolver, which ensures DNS directs to the client to the closest possible node. DNS-based approach I was explaining, maybe I'm in Australia, but my DNS resolver in Europe and now I will be redirected, redirected to the wrong place my, uh, because DNS-based approach is checking the DNS resolver. With the AnyCast approach, it's not checking the DNS resolver IP address, but it can see the client IP address. That's why uh, we can ensure the end user will be redirected to the closest possible mode. That's important, very important distinction. Related to this architecture, any case offers some advantage over advantages over DNS-based request routing. Most importantly, due to its efficient use of network hosts, it allows for faster connectivity, not always, it may not be true, but uh, in general, let's say. The complexity in setting up any case solution, of course, significantly reduced because same IP address is assigned everywhere. Complexity is reduced, I told you this. So comparison charts would be very nice here. Complexity reduced with this approach also. And more accurate uh, user redirection request routing point of views can be achieved with any case routing. We said it's not looking the DNS resolver IP address, but the actual client IP address. Any case approach. Any case request routing approach is considered in a scenarios where less latency because less number of DNS lookup, uh, less DNS lookup uh, is required. We are saying because less DNS lookup, also we are reducing latency. DNS based re request routing, though, 
always pros and cons. There is no winners. There is no best here. So in which cases you would select which one? In this page request, you would select if you are looking more granular, more flexible server selection criteria, not just distance wise, okay, but maybe server load, pop based capacity, network capacity, bandwidth point of view, etc. Okay. Oh, it was fast and I touched the surface as you can see, not going to so much details. But hopefully you have an idea. If I will summarize, we talked about in CDN, who is doing CDN business, where they deploy their uh, servers, why they are in the first place content providers getting this CDN service. And we see that content providers, especially large ones, they are deploying their CDN networks themselves. So they control everything. Uh, we gave an example like Google, Facebook, Netflix, they have their own CDN networks. And also we have separate CDN companies, their own business only CDN like Akamai, Fastly, Cloudflare, blah, blah, blah. and some CDN providers, they have been also a couple other businesses, but they are not competing with their customers, which is content providers. And we talked about uh, server selection criteria, distance, server load, bandwidth capacity, pop based capacity, and so on and so forth, and server redirection mechanisms, which means the end user will be redirected to the closest place based on either DNS-based approach or any case-based approach. We talked about the DNS-based approach. We've seen that the, the client's IP address is not visible, but the client's DNS resolver IP address will be visible from the CDN point of view. That's why the client might be redirected to the wrong location uh, because the DNS resolver IP address will be visible on the CDN side. On the any case side, uh, CDN DNS can see actual client's DNS. That's why the redirection will be more accurate and the closest location, the end user can be redirected. Also, we talked about with the DNS based approach, we are doing most lots of DNS based lookup, which increases the latency with any case, less amount of lookup, reduced latency. With the DNS, each and every node, we assign different IP addresses. So setting up entire CDN network might be complex with the AnyCast single IP for every place. Uh, complex point of view, less complex. We talked about the request routing in this way. So hopefully you enjoyed. If you have any question, go ahead now. For folks not aware with DNS space too much. Okay, we are talking about uh, some URLs here. Thanks, Anush. That's the, yes, recursive lookup is happening there. He's providing some links. You can also open the window and read and read more and more. Aren't uh, there problems with any case on the internet across multiple service providers in the BGP H2Z? We discussed BGP security mechanisms to verify uh, the source of the prefix and mitigate prefix hijacking. You are right, it might be. And But now if I will go and explain that one, I need to explain many things before that and I need to talk about RFC 7908 and so on and so forth. Uh, route leaks and hijacks and you are right. Is DDoS protection these days? Big part of CDN offering, that's true. Uh, this was what I wanted to talk. What do you think? Was it fun? Easy to understand and Excellent. Good to hear that. And uh, we can continue to discuss uh, on this topic and any other topic, as you know, in the, our study group, CCD study group. Let's uh, finish this video now. I think I will share this video also on YouTube channel. Later on, uh, other guys who couldn't join today, they can watch. Any other question? Okay then. Bye for now, guys. For the YouTube audience, please like and share this uh, video. So if this video gets 100 likes, we will release another video. Thanks for watching.